नहीं नहीं अभी मीटिंग लॉक इन करी मैं मीटिंग स्टार्ट होने के बाद में मैं लॉक कर दूंगा नहीं वो आप लॉक कर दिया मत करो आउटसाइड आईटी में वाले लोग है ना हां नहीं वो लेटिन करने पड़ेंगे हां वो तो करेंगे ना लेटिन लेकिन हम लोग जाएंगे क्या
Hello. Check, check, check.
So, good evening, uh, one and all. Uh, honorable guest speaker of the day, Ambassador Manjeev Singh Puri, IFS 1982 batch. Honorable Director Professor Suhasis Joshi. Uh, honorable Convener, Outreach Committee and Acting Dean of International Relations today, Dean of Administration and Registrar, sir, all officers, all faculty members, all staff members, all students, and including those students who are joining this session online today. So, sir, today we have the privilege to have Ambassador Manju Singh Puri for a public lecture under India at the rate 75 Distinguished Lecture Series, an initiative by Ministry of External Affairs, which is as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. That is 75 years of India's independence. So to welcome, as per our tradition, the Honorable Ambassador, sir, I request our Honorable Director, sir, to present him a plant sapling as customary we have been following. May I now request our Honorable Director, sir, for a welcome address in the honor of the Honorable Speaker, sir, please. Please give a big hand. <laughs> big hand, sir, for reserved for him today. We are the host. Yeah. So uh, I welcome uh, Mr. Manjit Singh Ji Puri for uh, a two-hour institute. It's a great honor that he could spare some time for us. Um, it's a great initiative by the government of India that uh, persons like him, those who are visionary, those who have, you know, visited a large, you know, met with a large number of people of different domains, different religions, different, you know, variety of backgrounds. And they, can come back uh, with a lot of learnings and then they share these learnings with us. So this is a great series, uh, I would say, uh, uh, where you can educate and you can share your experiences with the people all around. Uh, I'm sure formally uh, we will read his uh, resume, but I can see that he has been in many countries during his um, tenure as an IF officer. And um, he also has uh, uh, been a professional uh, fellow and advisory board of uh, uh, Energy uh, Resources Institute. So he has done a great, marvelous job, and I'm sure we will have a lot of learnings from him uh, during, uh, during his talk. Uh, I also find that, uh, I mean, remember that uh, in, uh, there is a, there is actually a, uh, lecture series instituted by Indian Forest uh, 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 Foreign Department, uh, where it need not be only during the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, but at any point of time that series can be, you know, awarded, and we can actually talk to the uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Department and say that we are ready to host this series. So not no, not necessarily in this particular year, but you know later on also we can do it. So any of such ambassadors when they are available, people are available, we can call them for uh, discussion and the lecture at our institute. So without much uh, time, I will uh, I welcome you, uh, Puriji, and I hope you will have wonderful time and stay at our institute. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words for our honorable speaker, sir. So we know that uh, people of such a stature do not require much in introduction, but still it is our privilege and I would request on dais our uh, convener outreach committee to just give a brief profile of the honorable speaker for the day today.
so thank you uh, namaskar and good evening so honorable director iit indore uh, professor joshi honorable ambassador uh, sri manjeet singh puri registrar in charge mr hota and assistant registrar mr thakur deans heads of the departments my faculty colleagues and colleagues from the non teaching section and what is most important is the generation next my student friends so i on behalf of the institute seminars and public outreach uh, committee extend my hearty welcome to all of you and special warm welcome to ambassador sri puri ji it gives me a sense of extreme pleasure today that we are going to add a new dimension new flavor or new leg to our institute outreach activities by the addition of india at 75 Bidesh Niti Distinguished Lecture Series. So this will be a new addition to our uh, outreach activities. Before I start introducing our esteemed speaker of today, let me make a mention that I had a chance to meet French astronaut who later excelled to be the head of European Astronaut Center, Michel Tognini in Geneva. He has spent 19 days in space and was instrumental in the launch of the famous Chandra X-ray Observatory. to discover this big bang uh, expansion of the universe he made a special mention of the indian space program isro by saying oh you are an indian scientist india has a very successful space research program and india is a member of the elite space club so that is what he mentioned and if you recall it is started with vikram sarabhai carrying the payloads on a cycle today india is a global player in space technology if you see our make in india program india is going to be a leader in defense technology very soon and if you look at yesterday's newspapers so it says that india is engaged in the training of egypt air force in the air combat and going to supply missiles and fighter aircrafts to egypt and malaysia and to other countries as well we need to feel proud of the country and the system we belong to so that our effective contribution to the nation building is better visible outreach as a socio scientific responsibility of scientists and technocrats adds values to the society through the much needed exposure of the next generation scientists and engineers where we try to bring the cutting edge science and technology in a language that is easily understandable by general audience this program i believe is an outreach program of the ministry of external affairs government of india to bring the foreign policy of the country to all levels this also becomes our outreach program when we join in hand to take it further to schools and college levels we at iit indore have always felt this and tried our best to make exemplary outreach activities through online and offline modes in this direction we have conducted lectures by nobel laureates by eminent scientists and engineers from india and abroad visit of schools and college students to iit indore laboratories empowering nearby schools colleges through various activities public lecture series like ramarajan hardi lecture in lectures in mathematics acharya pc rai and asima chatterjee lecture series in chemistry frontiers in physics role of science in nation building during global health crisis each year after the nobel prize is announced in october we conduct nobel prize series budget discussions national science day and open house activities prosperity through science and technology tedx talks by students regular ek bharat shreshth bharat program where the school students teachers are exposed to advanced fields in science and technology and humanities through online lectures and training programs in the native language that is in hindi so these are a few which i thought i should brought uh, i should bring to the notice of everybody The Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, is organizing a commemorative lecture series entitled "India at 75: Bidesh Niti Distinguished Lecture Series" as a part of the celebration of 75 years of our independence. Under this initiative, lectures on India's foreign policy by distinguished retired ambassadors of India are being organized in various institutions across the country. The idea behind the lectures is to demystify India's foreign policy. that is to make our young minds understand how india's foreign policy operates and the role of the ministry of external affairs of india through these lectures students and youth benefit from the vast experience and knowledge in the domain of foreign policy 
of retired ambassadors who have served the, as the representative of India in various capacities in Indian embassies, high commissions across the world in their long careers. Taking a lead in this direction, we at IIT Indore today with, uh, with us, Honorable Ambassador Sri Manjeev Singh Puri, who has kindly agreed to deliver a public lecture on India's tryst with global destiny at IIT Indore. This is being telecasted live on YouTube for the benefit of all and archiving purpose as well. To introduce our esteemed speaker, Sri Manjeev Singh Puri is a former ambassador. He joined the Indian Foreign Service in 1982 and served as ambassador of India to European Union, Belgium, Luxembourg, Nepal. He, also, uh, he has also served as ambassador and deputy permanent representative of India to UN during 2009 to 12 a period during which India was on the Security Council. Prior to that, from 2005 to 9, he headed the division in the Ministry of External Affairs dealing with UN issues on the social and economic side. In addition, he has served twice in Germany, in Bonn and Berlin, in Cape Town, Muscat, Bangkok, Caracas, and he retired on 31st December 2019 in the rank of Secretary of Government of India. Major areas of his experience relate to multilateralism, which is UN, Europe and Nepal, and he was involved as a lead member of the Indian delegation at numerous global negotiations on migration, human rights, UN reforms. His professional focus has been on issues relating to the environment, climate change, and sustainable development. He was a lead negotiator for India at the UN on issues relating to the post-2015 development agenda, sustainable development goals, and at the UN Conference on Sustainable Development held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in June 2012. He was a key member of India's delegation at various climate change negotiations, including the Conference of Parties of the UNFCC in Copenhagen in December uh, uh, 29, and before that at Montreal, Bali, Bonn, Poznan. Furthermore, he was involved with India's participation in the G8, G5 summits from 2005, and uh, was the point person for the major economies uh, forum. Ambassador Puri has a master's degree in management and did his BA honors in economics from St. Stephen's College, Delhi. He is presently distinguished fellow at the Energy and Resources Institute, Terry, and a distinguished visiting fellow with Ananta Center. Thank you, Ambassador Puri, uh, for finding time to visit us and deliver this public lecture. So without taking more time, I now request Honorable uh, Ambassador Sri ji to deliver his public lecture. Thank you, sir. Director Saab, Mr. Dean, Mr. Assistant Registrar, friends, thank you very much for inviting me to Indore. Of course, I'm very grateful to my parent body, the Ministry of External Affairs, for sponsoring this visit. It's very good of them to set up this series. But I want to thank the Indian Institute of Technology, Indore, for the warm hospitality, the wonderful possibilities, and giving me this opportunity or what should I think? Jatang some Maitri with all of you. We are sitting in the Maitri Hall, isn't it? Hindi Hindi Janta Sablok. Sab Janta Gu Bharwara to Nay. Nay, 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 Foreign policy, I think we should be quite clear. I'm a practitioner. You know, aap logi tarah mein IIT nahi gaya. I did go to a management school and so on. There's much to it. But I think one of the things that they forgot to tell you in my CV was that I am now have been. So I have freedom. And as a retired guy, I can say whatever I want. I've done my bit. 
I am not any less patriotic than anyone else, but at least I am not bound by the rules and regulations. And so I can share with you experiences of a practitioner. I am a very firm believer in what theory is and the importance of theory. But you know, when you see the real world, then many a times, many a times, what you see is that yaar, ideally, what we have learned, what we have in our mind, it is to be तो रियलिटी क्या है रियलिटी तो यही है कि दुनिया में कोई खास चेंज तो आया नहीं लोग वैसे ही हैं एक दूसरे पे जताओ मैं ऊपर आप यू डोंट माइंड मेरी हेजेमनी चलेगी देश भी वैसे ही है सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट कि अखाड़े में ये सब चलता है देशों का अखाड़ा जो है हेजेमनी ऑफ पावर दैट इज द वे ऑल दीस इंस्टीट्यूशंस वर्क एंड दे हैवंट चेंज्ड मच द इंस्ट्रूमेंटलिटीज हैव चेंज्ड and in your generation, the instrumentality might be some guy sitting in one cubby hole and controlling everything like one of these science fiction movies or the other. That I don't know. But isn't it all a matter of who owns the resources and who owns the people? And more than that, who has the willpower? Let me tell you something about foreign policy just to make things a little different from this lecture, etc. and the India story. As I mentioned to you, foreign policy is essentially de de domestic, at least for all large countries. United States, mein wo log jo, jo bhi karte hai na, bolte hai, dunia ke liye hai. Lekin agar koi choti si cheez bhi apne liye achhi nahi hai, wo nahi hogi. It is perhaps the only country in the world which has signed the least number of international instruments, despite having piloted them all the way. Because they have global hegemony on their side. And that's the nature of the game. And as you become a larger country and a larger player, you realize that, you know, family, civilizational state, they are all one thing. We are in the business of nation states. And nation states are really about hegemony, etc. I leave this thought with you. Apni zindagi mein, jab aap koi corporate job karenge, aap ki company kya behave karegi, wo CSR program baut achcha hoga. But the asal program will be, am I dominating the market? Have I got the best things going? I am very good. I am Neither will the stock market respect you. I think the best game in town, and if you don't mind my saying so, there's Chatham House rules there, I guess. Look at the Tatas. What is the best thing? What is the I am the biggest, I am the best, and so on. And there's nothing wrong in it, because that is the nature of competition, and that takes things forward also. So let's leave out morality. Let's leave out all these things. All those are very important in life. Very important. But countries basically act in hegemony. And that's the nature of the game. I believe, of course, when India started off in 1947, we were a different country. Let me give you a bit of this history. You know, forget previous things. 197 years from Battle of Place, Certainly, we were colonized by a European power. The same guys who have given us the world in which we are living today. This world is world not Mughal or Hans, that world is world is Thai boot. world is that of the modern era. This post-industrial revolution and more than anything else, post what is called the Treaty of Westphalia. Nation states in action with each other. We are seeing this in Russia, Ukraine today in the year 2022. And these are the nature of the game. What happened with India? The first 50, 60 years after the British sort of became overall powerful in India was really about a colony tucked away in the past, nothing much happening. But you know, as the world in Europe started crystallizing towards the beginning of the 21st century, i.e. I'm talking about the early 1900s. And remember, there was a so-called world war in 1914. What was the world war about? It was really about Germany saying that, you know, France, the Dutch, and the Brits have hogged up the entire world. I've got no place to go here. And, but I have become a huge industrial superpower. How do I exercise my hegemony? Instead of going after territories in the rest of the world, they went after them themselves and were nearly successful, stopped different matter, stopped as a result of the combined power of the colonies. India was the largest contributor 
to the armies of the so-called free world, the Indian army in the first world war was the largest coming together voluntarily of armed armies anywhere in the world. What did we do? Well, we effectively stopped the German advance and we held the world to the way it used to be. So the internationalization of India started, you know, around that time. The Brits realized this was certainly a colony, but a very unique kind of colony. India went to the Versailles Peace Conference after the First World War. There was one or two other countries who were like us colonies. China was also among them, but it wasn't a colony. Remember that. We became founding members of the League of Nations. So actually, we celebrated a hundred years of India's internationalization in the modern world sense. Two years back, in 2020, 1920, the League of Nations was set up. And as a consequence of that, and why did the Brits do it? Reason very simple. They felt very, and rightly so, that at the table, they would have one extra vote. Their colony would vote for them. Of course we would. But what did it do for us? Did you know that the Indian delegation for the League of Nations initially had only two people? Only two were allowed. Uh, four were allowed for the big powers and small countries were given two seats. You know who the two were? The Maharaja of Bikaner, representing the princely states. In some senses, if I say this to you, jo independent, thi, sovereign thi in their own rights. You know, coming from this geography. And the other was Lord Sina. He was the first Indian who became a secretary to the government of India under the British Raj. Can you imagine when it went to the British cabinet and they India ko represent karne wale do Hindustani. They took the decision and instead Lord Montague will lead the delegation. So that is why the great photographs and the great paintings of the First World War have Maharaja of Bikaner standing, everybody else is sitting. But you know, internationalization of India had begun. I'm saying all this to you to you know, take you to exactly what the subject matter that I would try and speak to you about. What has happened in the last 75 years. We became founding members of the League of Nations. Well, 30 years later, we had the first, second world war. Again, the Indian army played an absolute pivotal role. This time, again, the largest force ever assembled voluntarily. Well, we were part of the Allies. Many of you may not recall, may not even know this, that you know the city of Berlin was declared a kind of city under allied control. It was part of the power sharing agreement after the First World War, Second World War. The entire area of Eastern Germany was occupied by the Soviets. But as part of asserting allied control, the French, the British and the Americans landed in Berlin. And it said, this is a city in which we will all have joint control. You can't do it. The Soviet Union was powerful but couldn't keep them out. Well, they set up an Allied Control Council. And all the countries which were members of the Allies were given a seat there. There was an Indian there also. A member who, a civil service officer who joined the foreign ministry was given the honorary rank of Major General and served on that thing. He didn't have much of a role. But he was there for the sake of the symbolic presence which establishes who you are. So India was a very unique nation. When the United Nations conferences were held in 1945 in San Francisco, which formed the UNO, the United Nations as we call it today, the Bretton Woods Conference was held, which formed the IMF and the World Bank. And there was a third United Nations Conference in Havana. It formed the World Trade Organization, never came into being because the United States Senate refused to ratify it. But India became a charter member of the United Nations. Maybe it will gladden your hearts, I don't know. But Pakistan had to make an application. It went through very fast. But it happened in September 1947. We made no application. We were charter members. Let me also tell you a little story about China. Because it's also germane to our thinking. And you have to ask me a question. I have to give you a lecture. I have to talk to you. Because I want to enthuse you. I want to tell you that you are part of a 
country with a manifest destiny in global affairs. Let me tell you the story about China so that we can get it out of the way in some senses. Why is China a permanent member of the Security Council with a veto? They may not have been colonized, but what was their halat? Indian army soldiers were walking the streets of Beijing, Shanghai. Agar aaj bhi, agar aap kisi se purani photos dekhi, to sare policemen in Shanghai mein sardar the. Sab pagdiyan paante. Chinese, ab main apne aap aap toh unko keh sakta hoon. Unka concept of darwan in the hotel is somebody who wears a turban. I once visited Beijing, and there was a guy with a big tura and a pagdi and a dadi and all standing there. Main har roj usko satsri kaal karke jata tha. Tisre din jab main jara tha, maine dekha uska naam dekha tha Mansoor Khan. I was like, 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 I this was the Indian Army was doing. The Sindhya Horse, which is one of our very well-known tank regiments. If any of you come with army background, koya army background ka? Sindhya, horse regiments are the regiments which run tanks. They, you know, converted from being cavalry regiments to being what are called the modern horses, the tanks. Sindhya horse is a very old regiment. It is somewhere in the 19, late 60s, unka symbol hota tha, one of their soldiers, you know, sitting on a horseback and a poor Chinese guy dragging the thing in front. Upar boss betha hua aur niche koi bichara le ja raha. Logon ko baad mein batana pada. Bhai sab dunia badal gayi hai. Zara apna symbol symbol change karo. How did China become a permanent member with a secure, with a voice? So, ek baad simple sa reason hai. The United States always has had a massive relationship with China across the Pacific Ocean. Ham log yahan par bethe agar aap globe dekhiye ga. Dean saab ke kamre mein itna bada globe pada hua. Kabi sir, aap India ke piche khade hoye na, to aapko if you don't mind my saying so, sir, America ni na That is why we don't know what they did across the two oceans. They had huge relationship with China across the Pacific Ocean. They were doing missionary work. They were doing lots of things there. Secondly, in the, I, I won't use the word liberation, but getting rid of the Japanese from China, the Americans were in the lead. Most of the operations were conducted from Indian soil. Their headquarters were in Calcutta, but neither the Indian Army nor the British Army were involved. It was a purely American operation. Their greatest assets and supports were the Chinese insurgents, the guerrillas, the, the nominally Chinese government. And the Americans therefore felt they were obliged to support the Chinese. A very beautiful outcome of the American operations out of, Calca out of Calcutta for the liberation of China or getting rid of the Japanese in China was this soft, soft ice cream that we get here. Aajkal ab quality walls dekhte na. Aapko sabko pata isse pehle hum loong ke zamane mein quality ice cream hoti. Quality walls to Hindustan levers. Levers ka product hai. To quality ice cream hoti thi. Lekin 1945 vagaira se pehle India mein aisi ice cream nahi hoti. If you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this, you can see that you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this. You can see that this is a very good thing. This is a plant like Calcutta. When you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do this, it was cheaper to sell rather than carry your plant back. That's how quality has got the first of these machines because they had the contract there and they were working there. Life is very interesting. But why am I saying all this to you? Basically, to tell you about the internationalization of India and how these things happen. The third reason, and perhaps this was the most important reason for legitimacy as to how China became a permanent member. Three countries, Russia, yeah, USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Great Britain and America. If we have a UN and we have a veto, we will not After all, they were the three winning powers. Japan or Russia, uh, Germany, to khadam ho the, baaki log to kuch bhi nahi the. Ham to unke call nahi the. Britain felt ke ham kam hai. Sirf Soviet Union ke against ham do sirf kam hai. And so they proposed the idea of France ke bhai thik hai, they've lost this war, but they are a great power. 
the Russians also knew them from the Napoleonic Wars, this, that, and the other. They agreed. It was at this point the United States of America proposed that China should be made a permanent member. The argument is very simple and straightforward. You know, all of us who are the halves of the world have divided up the world and given ourselves something. One place must be given to the others. And who is the best, most legitimate Akadar of this? The largest country in the world. None of us could even argue. Aaj bhi sithi ye hai. Agar yaan developing countries ki line lagai jai hai. Aur hume dousri jaga mila toh hum usko inkar nahi karenge. Jo bhi kahe. We will accept the fact that we are number two. Sir, before I go to the lecture, let me leave with you the thought. Either the year 2023 or 2024, you will become the world's largest country. And let's not add in population terms. You will become the world's largest country. Some of you think about what I'm going to tell you. You think that perhaps th third or fourth standard in school is the time when a child is first exposed to geography. Fourth class? It's a big, big, it's okay, right? Or fifth, sixth, I don't know, whatever you guys so sixth class में बच्चे को geography explain की जाती है। आप ये मानेंगे कि आज कहीं भी दुनिया में, कहीं भी, चाहे Latin America हो, चाहे Africa हो, चाहे Pacific Islands हो, चाहे Asia हो, North America हो, anywhere, a child who goes to the sixth standard in school and gets his first exposure to geography, never attends geography after that again, he will certainly have heard about China. Would you agree on that? Some of you are doubting that. I don't know what you think about geography. I know you guys are all in sciences. Can you imagine if I asked you the same question, would every single child have heard of India who has only been to that sixth standard and nothing more? I say, this is mathematics. You know so much. See, the probability is less. Increasingly less. What do you think will happen after this? What do we do here? Oh, so many people will do this, what will happen, what will happen, what will happen. Oh, people will be like that. That has nothing to do with your ranking. Whether it's a good idea to have a large population or not, you and I can have a debate. If any of you study economics, etc., I'm willing to have a long conversation with you to tell you, you need to leverage population, but demography is an asset. It isn't what is generally said around. No. It's only because you are a big market. Otherwise, how does it matter who you are? If you are a ship-to-mouth existence country, you don't matter. It's because you're a market, because you buy. You do everything that other people are interested in. That's the nature of the game. That's the nature of hegemony. When you will become the first, in the first few years, people will keep saying, yeah, yeah, big but poor. After a little while, the one thing that they will have to say is, in any committee of nations, when you line up people, you will have to be recognized by the smallest child anywhere going to school. Do you realize what it means for your people's perception about you? It may be poor, but you are part of those who matter in the world. It's a huge change. People like me had no qualms about standing second in the line. None of you will ever have to stand second in the line. Now, is it good, bad? That we'll come to in a minute. But just internalize this particular thought. So let's start with India's tryst with global destiny. Sir, is somebody in a position to move this thing? Kisi ke hat mein hai ye? Ya main isko... So what do I do? Ah, this is very good. So, this is for. Yep. Thank you very much, young lady. Thank you. So, let's start with 1947. I told you the history of India. We were internationalized. We knew our place. We were founding members of the UN. All that is true. Did we have a choice? 
I have used three expressions there. Actually, we could cut it down to just one. Idealism. Today, we can think of many things. We can talk of hegemony of power, hegemony of nations. Ye jo maine aapko badi badi baatein banayi, hum sab inke baare mein baat kar sakte hain. Lekin 1947 mein jo past past hoga hoga, 1947 tak till 14th of February 1947. You were part of the largest military might ever assembled in the world. If the Chinese had opened their mouth, these troops would have gone and silenced them and they would have had no choice but to be silenced. But on 15th of August 1947, were you that legatee of the Raj? The answer is no. You inherited all the drawbacks, but you were no longer part of that large, massive machine. You were now a country which had gone through partition, a country which was struggling in various ways, making a nation state out of itself, making a nation out of itself. Poverty stared you in the face. The world itself is not kind in any such matter. And so we had to be bound by something more. And that is why I said, but we are different. Because we then went back to our roots, Vasudeva Kutumbam. We went back to the fact that, look, we've given so much to the world in terms of values, in terms of spirituality, in terms of thinking, in terms of science, so many things. We don't have the abilities. Sayya, hamare paas utne guns or helicopters wagara nahi hai. Lekin ye to hai jo hamari den hai. And so idealism had to drive us. And of course, a very interesting element of the idealism was that while the subcontinent and Indonesia had been decolonized, vast parts of the world was not decolonized, particularly Africa, with which we had very close ties. And so decolonization allowed you to form a committee of nations to rally around some subject, which was difficult for the other guys because it pinched their morality. <laughs> Aap ne South Africa pe, in a sense, kabza kiya hua. Lekin madala ke aap khade ho ke ye kaya sakta hai ke South Africa in the apartheid days jo kar raha baut achcha tha. Ye to nahi kaya sakta hai. So this hurt also hurts nations. Naming and shaving hum loong ke liye sirap apne ghar ki baat nahi hoti. Hello. Agar koji saanth wala aap ko ungli uthaye or good reason ho, to aap bura to maantai hai. Countries face it even more. Countries are thin-skinned, and rightly so. Idealism. This is what allowed us to be permanent members of the Security Council. You know, we joined the Commonwealth. Aajkal hum log baat kar rahe hain. Aaj Queen Elizabeth ka funeral chal raha. Log sawal kar rahe hain. Aap mujhe poochega ye sab sawal. You know, till 1947-1950, in fact, the Commonwealth meant that the head of state in the Commonwealth will be the queen or the king. The governor general was his or her appointee. In fact, if you read the Hindustan Times, I have written an article likha, it's very interesting. As India became an international place and Delhi became a growing capital and everybody realized that Delhi would become an important diplomatic capital, many countries started opening missions there. Nepal opened the dip, its embassy in 1934. That is why, if you go to Delhi, they are located in Mandi House. That is why Iran is located in nearby Tilakmark, the heart of Delhi, Kanaut place. And it's not that they are in Shanti Pata, where we have made a place in the diplomatic enclave in 1960s, and they have given them a place. Because they predate them. And they have made a place where they have bought them. Why will they buy them? क्यों जाएंगे जो जगह जो हम लोग उनको दे रहे हैं कि भाई आप हमें भी दीजिए हम वो कहते हैं यार हम तो यहां पर आपके बोने से बहुत पहले से द फर्स्ट एंबेसडर हु प्रेजेंटेड क्रेडेंशियल्स इन इंडिया आफ्टर 15th ऑफ सितंबर 15th ऑफ अगस्त 1947 यू विल बी सरप्राइज्ड व्हेन आई टेल यू दिस इट वाज अ बेल्जियन एंबेसडर उसका कारण बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है 
फ्रांस के साथ हमारी थोड़ी सी कुट्टी थी वो लोग कॉलोनाइज कंट्री थी अल्जीरिया वगैरह अगर आप लोग याद रखें वो तो नहीं भेजते हमारे यहाँ डच के साथ भी दे वॉज सिमिलर प्रॉब्लम इटली जर्मनी की तो हालत खराब थी देवर्ड कंट्रोल स्पेन और पोर्चुगल में तो डिक्टेटर्स चला रहे थे तो रह कौन गया ऐसे ही होता है हालात दुनिया में ऐसे ही बदलते हैं बट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली दे वॉज अ ब्रिटिश हाई कमिश्नर would i have said that the first ambassador was the belgium and the answer is yes and the reason is very simple it's what i just told you till 1950 26th of january india was a dominion the british high commissioner only represented the government of britain asal baat kya hoti hai wo alag hai but you know the protocol or ranking of who you are is derived separately he did not represent the sovereign the sovereign was represented by the governor general ambassadors represent the head of state the sovereign as they say and so the british high commissioner ranked below the belgian ambassador in terms of protocol in india aise hi hota hai life mein de jure de facto ye badi important elements hai and they are absolutely important de jure de facto to bahut chalta hai koi yahan bahut zabardast khatta khatta aa jaye wo sab kuch kar lega yahan लेकिन टीजूरे है उसका और चलेगी वो बहुत देरी तक नहीं चलेगी अनलेस यू गेट द टीजूरे राइट दैट वाज इंपॉर्टेंट सो इंडिया ज्वाइन द कॉमनवेल्थ वी टोल्ड द ब्रिटिश वी आर हैप्पी टू ज्वाइन द कॉमनवेल्थ पर द क्वीन विल नॉट बी द हेड ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया एंड सो द कॉमनवेल्थ चेंज्ड एंड बिकेम एन एसोसिएशन अ फ्री एसोसिएशन ऑफ नेशन आज 54 nations are members of the commonwealth you will be surprised that there are at least 3 or 4 who were not british colonies mozambique rwanda i think uh, one other country recently joined they see some merit in joining them all as a result of the indian effort and the world recognized this otherwise we would have all been saying the queen was our head of state no sir for us she was the head of state of a friendly country with whom we have lots of relations the president of india went absolutely in the fitness of things but the nature of the de jure relationship is one of equals and this is something to understand let me so you know we helped set up the non aligned movement the classic thing was decolonization it got everybody together until very recently developing countries in global fora always coalesced under the non aligned movement or the group of 77 which was used for economic negotiation basically why ki bhai har ek ki needs or requirements to wahi hain aap paise walon ke ideas aur hain hum climate change ki baat karte hain ye jo mudda main aapko seedha batau wo kya kehte hain wo simple si baat kehte hain bhai hamare grandfather ne kar diya emissions kar di हिस्टोरिकल इमिशन हो गई ये सब ये सब बाल भूल भूल जाते हैं फ्यूचर तो आपका इसलिए आप पे करिए वाह एक्सेप्टेड साइंटिफिक रीजनिंग एंड प्रिंसिपल दैट आई विल हैव टू डू इट दैट्स द नेचर ऑफ द एक्चुअल हेजमनी ऑफ पावर बट दैट आई शुड एक्सेप्टेड इन द डीजूरे दैट इज अ कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट मैटर ऑल टूगेदर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी how do you generate it can you just sit up and keep making statements who's going to listen to you but when you coalesce 110 countries behind you and you say it in one voice believe me the guy at the top the united states russians or chinese they can disregard you but at their peril and they realize that there's a de jure element so karenge to wo karenge jo karna hai kyunki unke paas dam hai लेकिन टीजूरे एस्पेक्ट उनको हमसे ज्यादा समझ आता है सो विच इज वाई दे ट्राई टू प्रिवेंट सच थिंग्स एवर हैपनिंग लेट मी टेक यू ऑन और सॉरी यू नो एंड देन वी वेंट थ्रू वेरी डिफिकल्ट फेज एंड दिस फेज वेंट ऑन फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम It's not only the Chinese aggression, 1962, जो हम लोगों के सब बिल्कुल सामने आता है. Barring one hooray, 
a very major one, 71. Massive change in our psyche in the world's understanding of India. The creation of Bangladesh. Hum log sab badal gaye. In our thinking, in our understanding of India and the world changed in its understanding of India. We had helped create a country which was among the larger countries in the world. Aaj agar aap dekh rahe hain Bangladesh's GDP per capita is higher than ours, well, somewhere along the other, it was our hand in getting it created. The world noted it. We perhaps in India didn't note it. Hum log abhi bhi, we have lots of issues. But the dunya jarur note kar. And the first time onwards, people said, developing poor, yes, but power, yes. Then came, as you know, the 74 nuclear implosion. The world and those who matter, they are recorded in their black book and they know who you are. You may not know it. We may not have been able to do anything for the next, what should I say, 14 years because of the global situation, our own situation. But the world certainly knows that you have inherent capability and you have made it public that you have it. And so the understanding of India kept on changing. And then let me say this. You know, I have said 62 to 71. Uh, there was some uptick for us from 72 to 2000. But really, was it an uptick? No. It continued to be a period of the economy not really looking up. It continued to be a period where we had to keep saying, you know, we helped create Bangladesh, we helped save genocide, we did that and the other. But dam, dam chal nahi raha tha. Much of this changed only with the coming together of the government in the most difficult days for India, when we even had to send gold reserves to the Bank of England for saving ourselves in having enough foreign exchange. Around the time, I've marked it at 2000, but you know, slightly lay, earlier than that. Correct. So, you know, once you started changing, but it takes a few years for the change to come about, you started feeling that you were on the way up. And the world started saying, for the first time, they started talking about India. Yeah, it's a great market. And then they started telling you, reform. Did anybody prior to 1971 tell us reform? Aapne Soviet model laga do, Soviet. Aapne koi bhi model kiya, jo madhi karo, yeah, the model is not good, but I don't care. Now I care on what you do about reform. If you set up an IIT in Indore and you don't do international cooperation, I care. That is what the guys who are collaborating with you in Germany and France are saying. Why are they saying it? Because you are that wonderful pool, both as a market for their products, a source for human capital for them, a place where their money can make more money, and finally, perhaps, a place where your money can be used for their benefits. Don't underestimate the investments being made by Indians overseas. And finally, aren't you a country for global good? and global good of the kind that those who matter in the world like, whether it's democracy, whether it's freedoms, it's rights, it's capitalist way of thinking, all those particular things. That's the defining change. And then, you know, this is the era in which we are living, isn't it? Goldman Sachs. Naam suna hai? So, kya janta uske baare mein? Baut paise banata hai. They're always on the right side of the U.S. economy, the U.S. government. Well, you, Goldman Sachs had an economist in London called Jim O'Neill. He later on became the Minister of State for Finance in Great Britain. But in times of his research towards the end of the 1990s, Jim O'Neill coined the term BRIC, not S. BRIC, BRIC. These were countries which he named as the emerging engines of global growth, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. After that, our perception is 
जैसे मैंने कहा 2024 में दुनिया की परसेप्शन आपके बारे में बदलेगी लेकिन समय लगेगा फॉर यू टू रिकॉग्नाइज दैट टू बी द लार्जेस्ट कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड इज नॉट अ बर्डन इसमें कुछ फायदा भी है आफ्टर जिमोनील सेड ब्रेक हम लोगों की अपने बारे में परसेप्शन निकल हमारी मूछ जरा ऊपर हो it's not that we didn't see difficult times after that have we not seen difficult times we've seen very difficult times covid mein no country took a hit as india did we had the highest fall among large countries in terms of our gdp but our manobal our shakti our thinking our feeling that we can overcome remains resolute and the world also believes that this was the one change and then what how did it get manifested got manifested in this g20 next year we will be the presidents of the g20 ye hai kya g20 very simple 20 of the largest economies in the world why did it come about so 2008 there was a great global recession the americans and at that time it was george bush the second obama took over later looked at it very simply till then whenever the world had faced such challenges the most important developed countries in the world aaj hum usko g7 kehte hain they would come together pump in money do everything the americans said nahi yaar ye to nahi chalega we will pump in money and it will all be shoveled to china ye to nahi chalega inko paisa to dena padega hamari duniya theek karne ke liye apni duniya aur duniya ki duniya theek karne ke liye and then why did they think of india brazil etc my understanding of that is quite simple if they had only chosen china the chinese would have been automatically graduated from being the largest country in the world to being also among the most powerful countries in the world to bring about a certain semblance of balance just as the brits had said ke france ko bhi le lo as a permanent member unhone kaha zara india brazil vagah ko bhi g20 mein le lete hain sirf nahi to china ki tooti chalegi yahan par for their own interests in maintaining a degree of multipolarity we were beneficiary but we were there that is why you could be beneficiary had you not been there why should you have been chosen why was some other country papua new guinea not chosen etc why was some other qatar not chosen you were there you had achieved it you were standing on the doorstep and that is what makes it possible even for the door to open and say please come inside yeah and that's what has brought about the greatest change which is what makes us what we are today on the cusp actually of opening the next door perhaps the final door let me show you this this is a couple of years older uh when i used to still be in the government employment i'm been too damn lazy letting covid be the reason for it for not having updated it but these are some projections and those of you who do mathematics etc can perhaps ratify it in your own way but just look at this figure these are not purchasing power parity figures okay don't get taken in by that that is a conversation item ke aapko hamburger yahan kitne ka milta aur wahan kitne ka milta agar asal mein dam lagana hai to koi farak nahi padta the motor bofors gun cost the same no matter whether you are india or united united states of america dam to wahi se hai हम बर्गर में दम नहीं एंड रियालिटी ऑफ ग्लोबली ट्रेडेड गुड्स यू हैव टू गो इन टर्म्स ऑफ नॉमिनल जी डी पी लुक एट द फिगर्स दिस इज नो डाउट दैट चाइना इज एक्सेलरेटेड वे हेड वॉट इज द रीजन वेदर वी लाइक इट और नॉट ग्लोबलाइजेशन इन द लास्ट थर्टी ईयर्स हैज फाइनली और नॉट आई वोट से फाइनली बट टू अ लार्ज एक्सटेंट हैज पुट पेड टू द बेनिफिट ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रियल रेवल्यूशन the industrial revolution gave the western countries if 30 40 year edge india got the railways about 20 years after the first steam engine rolled somewhere in 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 and we were the finest colony to get it aaj wo tesla car banaye do teen saal ke baad to hamare paas bhi aani padegi aur china to shayad usse pehle hi le jaye today the only country which has a maglev train is china nobody else in the world has got it it's a siemens technology it's not a chinese technology but the germans found it too expensive the chinese said lagao so shanghai mein there is a maglev train it's the world's fastest train by far 
This is the nature of the game. Demography matters. I hope I've answered the first question to all of you. Demography is important. You need to harness demography. Demographic dividends, there are so many aspects to all of this. Look at the way countries are ranked. The European Union and Europe as such is separately noted here, so figures look like that. Let me assume that they are going to be in the same league as the United States. Let me assume. Let's not go into what diminish or hai, sab chhod dete. So what will happen? There will be China and there will be three of us. Ab sochiega. Bharat ki perceptions dunya ki aankhon mein badlengi ya nahi badlengi? Largest country, one of the three largest economies in the world. That Ladies and gentlemen, is the world that you are going to play. Kudos to all of you. All pass to your elbows. All good luck. We nurtured, took care of these things. But I'm very delighted that you will be handed over. A country within global rankings will certainly be looked at with far different eyes than what I saw in terms of my entire generation. So now let's do some nitty gritty. So let, let's spend a few minutes on all that. Look, our neighbors, I have told you before, Nepal, I used to be an ambassador in Nepal. Here I am told you have some Nepalese students here. Who is it? You are. When did you join? Last year means 2021. Where did you study? Sorry, I'm asking in these questions, but I'll, you, I'll give you the answer for that. Where you study? Kaan padhe ho? Achha, achha. Da, aap you are uh, uh, very much around here. I was telling the assistant registrar that I have no doubt that out of seven international students, three would be from Nepal. And the reason is very simple. A, they know how to crack our system. Prime example. B, many would have studied in India. Again, a set of advantages which are there. But you know, it's a country which is changing and changing so rapidly. Please tell me if you agree or don't agree with me. You know, hum log par, in our conception, there are three or four things which sort of mark Nepal. Hindu Rashtra, monarchy. We still think it's a monarchy, most of us, most uh, people in India. Chota sa country hai. It's poor and we add to it, you know, people who are in our areas, our colleagues, uh, Gurkha soldiers is that. But you know what is the reality? It's 46 million people. That would make it one of the largest countries in Europe. It's not Chota as a country. A flight from the west to the east of Nepal is longer than Delhi Indore, by the way. Secondly, its per capita income is rapidly shooting up. In fact, I dare say if it is perhaps better than us. It is one of the five largest recipients of remittances from around the world. And these remittances don't come only, uh, remittances as a percentage of GDP. They don't come only from India, which is a small contributor. They come from all over the world. Not just the Middle East. They come from Southeast Asia. They come from Americas, they come from all over the world. I'm very honored and delighted to have you at our IIT. If you ask him where are most of his colleagues, they would be in the universities you guys want to go to. The nature of change. In our neighborhood, we need to understand we are not the inheritors of the legacy of the Raj. The Raj, as I pointed out to you, was by far the strongest military power that ever existed. If you look at the Indian ambassador, it was the Raj's replication. Because it was the residence of the Indian, of the, the British resident out there. You were in Indore, but it couldn't be in this way. You have 500 acres here. Sir, 50 acres to Indian ambassador ke paas, in the heart of Kathmandu city. It's one of the largest cities in Asia. This legacy. Thi, us Are we in a position to do that? No. 
therefore the necessity of abandoning those theories there are problems from the large pakistan bangladesh there are problems but we need to look at this whole thing in terms of nation states and the way they interact hegemony of power no doubt i in front of him i would say so we are a larger country we will continue to demand and exercise hegemony of power but the methodologies of interacting those have to change and you have no choice in the matter the raj could afford to act in whatever way it always acted pakistan jo hai acha main aap logon ke samne ek bahut interesting baat kehta hu dekhiye the main reason in my understanding why we have this issue with pakistan is not the creation musliman state ban gaya hindu state ban gaya nothing of that kind very simple pakistan got created and thinks of itself as an equal to us they say aap bade hain so what hum aapke barabar as a nation state they have imbibed in themselves the idea of a nation state and so therefore bada chhota is not the point hum aapke barabari mein aap is table pe baithunga main bhi baithunga is table pe main kyun nahi baith sakta is table pe and you know it's like the cricket match 11 hi log khelte hain कभी कभी डिफीट भी हो जाती है ये ऐसे ही होता एंड दे आर देर फॉर अ कंट्री विद होम दिस कॉन्टेस्टेशन इज ऑलमोस्ट इन बिल्ड ऑफकोर्स आई फर्मली बिलीव दैट दे एंड देयर पॉपुलेशन शुड गेट ओवर विद दिस कॉन्टेस्टेशन इन देयर इंटरेस्ट बट एज लॉन्ग एज द मिलिट्री रिमेन्स द मोस्ट पावरफुल एंटिटी देयर हैव यू नोटिस वन थिंग यू नो देर बीन मिलिट्री कूज इन मेनी कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड लैटिन अमेरिका इज फेमस हुनता ये वर्ड जे यू एन टी है आपने सुना था जनता इट्स नॉट कॉल्ड जनता इट्स स्पेनिश वर्ड इज कॉल्ड हुनता हुनता मींस दीज यू नो कैरेक्टर्स हु कम टुगेदर द फोर्स व्हिच इज ग्रैब्ड इट वो सब हट जाते हैं अफ्रीका में इतने सारे कू होते हैं वो भी हट जाते हैं इंडोनेशिया में भी हट गया पाकिस्तान का तो चल ही जा रहा कभी सोचा क्यों माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज वेरी सिंपल एंड स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड इन मोस्ट कंट्रीज आर्मी टेक पावर on the pretext of giving their gov- their people good governance wo char panch saal ke baad good governance ka sheen utar jata hai sabhi log utne hi corrupt hote hain jitna society hoti hai but pakistan is the one country which says we need the army because we have an enemy isliye wo kabhi bhi khatam hoga ab jo marzi kahiyega log believe karte hain ki ye hame chahiye because they have ingrained in them this idea of competition to the point of enmity i hope the next generations there will change we look at bangladesh slightly smaller than pakistan but now doing so well but bangladesh doesn't have that in its if you ever deal with bangladesh in a multilateral scenario and if i may say this to you if we talk about multilateral negotiations usually we agar ye kashmir kashmir ko chhod dein on global issues climate ye wo pakistanis and we are always on the same table bangladesh is not it is the thinking which orients this and nothing determines that more than in your region and in your area of course as they say you know brazil is a very interesting country with 200 saal pehle they gained independence from the portuguese in various ways for the first 15 years the person who became foreign minister and all other countries around brazil are spanish speaking ex spanish colonial empire for the first 15 years they had one guy as foreign minister he did only one thing talking to the countries in the neighborhood and settling the borders aise hi hota we didn't have that luxury let's look at china it's something we have no choice but to deal with it's a geography with which we have old relationships hum buddhism ki baat karte hain ye wo bahut sari cheeze hain टुडे ऑल्सो दे आर आर लार्जेस्ट ट्रेडिंग पार्टनर लेकिन देर इज एन इश्यू ऑफ हेजमनी वी पर हैप्स आर नॉट एक्सर्टिंग हेजमनी पर हैप्स दैट्स इन द नेचर ऑफ वू वी आर पर हैप्स इट्स इन द वे वी आई अंडरस्टैंड आर केपेबिलिटी दे ऑन द अदर हैंड आर पर हैप्स ओवर एस्टिमेटिंग हु दे आर वी डोंट नो ऑल दैट बट दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ हेजमनी इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी एन इजी वन टू टॉक they tend to be patronizing towards us something which we cannot accept 
it is going to be one of the most important and defining sets of issues for us. Where will the world lean on it? I don't know the answers. I would believe that large parts of the world would lean in our favor, not because they prefer us, but because their competition is at levels far beyond us. And so consequently, as they say, your enemy's enemy is your friend. That kind of a scenario has the possibility. But frankly, I have little hesitation that you keep up this confrontation, may not be, but competition, hegemonistic pushbacks, please put them up, but also collaborate with them. You need to do it, whether it's climate, whether it's green economy. You know, if you are sitting here and you are sitting here, our life is good. If you are not making air conditioners, iPhones, then you don't have to be middle class to me, you don't have affordability. You should be so confident. Hopefully, next generation will be made in Vietnam, India will be made in India. I don't know. But these are things that one must internalize. And for those who will hold the sway of power, I want to leave these thoughts with you. That nation states even collaborate with those that they are antithetic to. That's the nature of being a nation state. United States of America. Everybody says they are natural partners. Lekin, hey, wo to apne aap ko bilkul, and rightly so. They are the ultimate power, they determine everything. Standards they determine, yaar, aap kya pahenenge, kya nahi kharenge, ye sab bhi wo determine karte. Agar, aaj kisi ne yaan tai nahi pahen hi hoi. Do you remember, till two, three years back, director saab to tai pahente, mein bhi tai pahenta, ye nahi pahenta. Thik hai na? Uska karan bada simple hai, financial tai ne tai ki obituary likhi di. Lekin financial tai ne likhi na, ab obituary ho gai hai. Ab jo dhubara pahda ho gai, wo dekha jai ga. They determine everything. Aajkal jo hume mere ko baut achhi lag rahi hai, ye ghadi hum log bulko jara hai. Kyo, kyo hum log pahe pahen rahe hai? Why do I feel so confident flashing it around here? Because it's the largest selling product in that country. So the global hegemony is there of the global power structure. If I walk around Indore, I'm sure McDonald's and KFC's abound like nobody's business. Why? We've all developed a taste for them, isn't it? Why did we develop the taste? It's a taste worth developing. And that's the nature of the way these things are. But it remains an elephant in the room as far as India is concerned. We have huge amount of convergences. But go back to that original chart. If you are in the three, I don't know which way it will. This cookie moves. It will all be in your hands. Yeah, these are some of the other things. Russia, is it an old weather friend? Should we continue? Many things will determine on what they are able to do themselves. I firmly believe that Europe, Russia, etc. are countries with huge amount of resilience. Pit ke bhi khade ho jate. And secondly, if they are down, collaborate with them. Because they are mines of information, money and technology. I am COVID ki baat kar in India, we say what we say? If we have a co-vaccine, then we say that the government was a government. Which vaccine did you want to put here? Tell us about it. Ah, we have given the name of the COVID shield. What is the vaccine? AstraZeneca. Developed in Europe. And if someone is going to be a better vaccine, which one you want to put here? Hmm, Pfizer. Biotin, Germany. Bought by the United States company Pfizer. This is the nature of those societies. They are technologically huge. I know this. I was ambassador in Europe, in uh, to the U European Union. We had this huge amount of fracas in Delhi, you know, with all this uh, pollution, this, that. And one of the ideas which people felt was less painful idea is change the fuel standards in India. You know, pata nahi chalta. Piche the refinery change kar rahi hai. Ho jayega, paisa lag jayega. If you tell someone to say, don't burn this trouble, then you will come back to your feet. Where do you get standards from? Very simple. Very simple. One source, Europe. Now, Bharat 6 norms are Euro 6 norms. Every single thing. It's easy because we are comfortable with them. 
because they are also norms which come from the same kind of backgrounds as us, democracies, freedoms, etc. And hence are norms which have representation. We take to them. And we feel comfortable. Which is why I tell my colleagues that if by any chance the Europeans, <laughs> the Russians are diminishing, I know you and I are losing out on this wonderful thing called multipolarity in the world because they were important elements of polarity. Let's prop them up. But on the other hand, let's do business with them because they have huge amounts to contribute and we have huge amounts to take and utilize from that. Um, we have, of course, Act East, work with the developing world, etc. Look, we must accept there's a shift in the global order away from the Atlantic, but it isn't ke aaj ho gaya hai. It's the directional move. Indo-Pacific is the place of the future. But right now, transatlantic is 50% of global GDP. Rise of China and hegemony, I've already explained to you. For us, particularly important. Post-Ukraine, Russia resettling. My own view is, even if they, let me say, take a bashing one way or the other, their resilience will continue. They will continue to remain a superpower. Superpowers don't get defeated, they just withdraw. We have seen one superpower do it from many places. Secondly, utilize that relationship. It will give you immense opportunity to grow yourself and reach that great figure of 60 trillion, etc. at the same time as they are hitting 60 trillion. Finally, I'm going to close and leave with you this thought. You are inheritors as you pass out of this institution to a country whose time will certainly be there at your time if it hasn't already come. The largest country in the world, the largest democracy, one of the largest economies. I wish you all all the best in your life. Thank you. By the way, I'm very happy taking questions. And please feel free to ask the most contentious of questions. Director Sahab, you're willing? I will lose. Yaar, kya farak padta? Bada, bada. Uh, there are two wonderful guys all on the right. Please, sir. Uncha bolia ka taake, logi baki bhi sunne. Converts from one, one firm to other firm. Chal So, abhi India is a developing country and Japan is a developed country. If we, com if we compare the both both of the country, to Chacha Bhatija or Bhrashtachar, developed country mein jyada hota hai ya developing country mein jyada hota hai? Sir, you have mentioned that uh, India has helped uh, Bangladesh to grow their GDP per capita in 1962 to 2000 slide. Did I say that? No, I didn't. I did. I said that India was, let me say, party to the creation of Bangladesh. Bangladesh has done well for itself. No, no, I am saying that you mentioned that the GDP of capita figures for Bangladesh is good to have yeah. than us, but it is the impact of India. So if India... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll, uh, yeah, please so go. if India can uh, uh, increase their GDP per capita, how uh, means when we are in the declining rate, how is now we are facing this situation? One thing. And second thing that in your slides, we haven't seen Japan. And if we see that Japan is technologically very advanced, they have faced the tsunami. So why the Japan is not uh, that important? Or... So let me try to answer the questions. Yours first. Yeah, many Germany been mentioned. Kya. Hai na? So reason, are they really players in their own individual right? Yes. But we are mentioning three largest players in the world. In that, you can't compare them. You know, 
there is no doubt but i did mention japan and germany both in the slide right so you can see where they rank in terms of where things are happening in the future look the japanese the germans the italians the spaniards a huge technological powers no doubt about that at all but you know for a country like india which is going to be the largest and among the very top in some senses the game is going to be these guys all combined we among the largest players in the world if you know japan alone can't push india across neither can germany alone the europeans taken together yes you know europe uh, today global gdp is 69 trillion dollars the united states is 21 trillion the european union is 18 trillion britain is 3 that makes it 21 we are two and a half the chinese are 12 the japanese are only four so i am not undermining them and their importance they are important certainly for us all countries are important every single one but in terms of the global balance of power india japan germany and brazil are closely bound together for un reform so just as japan and germany were left out in 45 being the losers of the second world war brazil and india were not grandfathered the chinese got grandfathered so we have to find ways out so they are a collaboration partner an important collaboration partner but when you are looking at hegemonistic determinants of what will happen to a country with the kind of manifest destiny that we are we need to put in the first slide the comparators with the largest players which is why it's happened japan is certainly very important no doubt coming to bangladesh you know let's give credit to bangladesh from a country which was one of the largest aid recipients in the world you remember some decade back when they became very large textile exporters they ended up in a situation where there was a fire in the center of dhaka which ruined all of these and people blamed them for human rights violations and that entire textile trade came to an end they've been able to recover go back and do it marvelously it's a tribute to bangladesh the economy the people and above all the leadership of bangladesh to be able to play the game in their best of interest today the gdp per capita might be higher than us but certainly their aggregate gdp is nowhere near where we are and it's never going to be anywhere there so bangladesh is a beautiful example of what you can do with governance directed at making things better for your country it's one of the good examples in the developing world and in the last several years but india is qualitatively in a different league so lessons you can certainly learn from them and you should but can you always replicate each of those things and will the hegemonistic determinants on you be the same as them the answer is no i'll give you a simple example let's take climate change negotiation Does anyone turn around and tell Bangladesh, please cut down your emissions, and forcefully tell them that even though per capita their emissions might just become slightly larger than ours, aggregates matter, which is why you know demographies matter. They are huge, but we are immense. Sir, bhai chara, kya kya tha? Apne bata cha cha bati ja. मैं क्या बताऊं वहां पर अमेरिका में तो कुछ सुना है कि बेटा बाप वो भी कुछ टेप वेप चल रहे हैं वहां पर ऐसा है ये हमारे एक मैं आपको छोटा सा ऐसे ही कहता मे बी इन दीज वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज ये कम भी है हो भी सकता है और काफी कुछ चीजें जो हमारे लिए लेट मी से दे बिकम ट्रांसग्रेशन ऑफ लॉ वहां पर दे आर नॉट ट्रांसग्रेशन ऑफ लॉ you know most western countries allow lobbying in fact they say in the united states there's no greater crime than not paying your taxes kahan se paisa aaye ye nahi humko chahiye tax de dijiyega wo paisa legitimate ho jata uh this is putting it very simply and in a simple manner there should be little doubt in anyone's mind that generally speaking developed economies tend to be tend to be there are exceptions they tend to have 
more participation, more representation, and therefore the Chacha Bhatija is less. Lekin, it might just be more legitimized. In our case, we have a moral angle to it. If we could perhaps get rid of those, I don't know the answers. But human nature being what it is, let's also understand that the de jure definition of what is right and wrong is also in your and my hands. Several things which yesterday were considered wrong, today we say, okay, yaar, chalta. Anji, sir, you were always very much there in the lecture, so please go ahead. We'll finish in about two, three minutes. It's yours. No, no, I don't. Good evening, sir. You can switch it up. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, as uh, you were the ambassador to India in Nepal, uh, a few a few years back, I mean, like uh, one or two years back, uh, there was an intervention of uh, Communist Party of China. Miss Liu of Communist Party of China uh, uh, took the delegations to uh, Communist Party of Nepal. Uh, means she directly interfered in the uh, uh, relations. Means uh, the government of Nepal. So, according to you, what could be the? I mean. Uh, the effects of it in on India and what India is uh, doing in, uh, I mean, in response of this or what we should do for that. So let's stick to China, Pakistan, and China, Nepal, India. If you border, it's very interesting. Ek map lijega. Nepal has about 1485 kilometers of land border with India and 1400 kilometers of land border with China they have borders with no other country. Isn't it a fascinating thing? Would you agree that you have to keep a little bit there? How much do you think? I don't think I'm going to believe in India. But I'll have to believe in it. So, that's how it happens. Look, these are games that countries play. Why will the Chinese not want to influence the, the Nepalese to be more pro them? Simple matters, BRI. Indo-Pacific, there used to be this theory of uh, this partnerships between, you know, which India was also supposed to be part of it, the United States, etc. Why shouldn't they want to play the game? Why shouldn't they want to dip their hands in the Nepalese development uh, agenda? What do we do? We also compete. We not only compete, we do much more. There are several things that they are not in a position to do because of technology. If you take a lot of money, then it will be from Nepal to China. It will be in your time. It will not be able to do it now. Thank God for that. We are the largest. Nepal used to be hugely deficient of electricity. Can you imagine a country with the kind of rivers which are available? The f Incidentally, the first power plant in the subcontinent of India was set up in Nepal in a place called Farfing. Aaj, Nepal is importing bijli from India. Can you imagine? But in five years, it won't be the case. Once this huge project Arun 3 and the second one, Lower Arun, comes in, something like 15 to 1600 kilowatt, uh, megawatts of electricity will be pumped into the system. Nepal won't be able to use it. It'll come to India. Things will change. This is the economics of things. So these are games. You naturally play them everywhere. We have a vested interest in Nepal. We have several kinds of vested interests. Many have said in the we have civilizational interests. We have people to people's interests. They also have in us. Don't they feel more comfortable here? Ma, roti beti ka rishta log bolte hai. Aisa hai. Unke zand hai. Nahi hai. Lekin aapko maintain do karna padega. Nation states have to play that game also. So, they succeeded, but wo khadam ho gaya na. Aise hi hota. So can I say thank you to you all? You were wonderful. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, sorry. There's somebody in a green shirt who wants to Can't say no to him. Okay, but that'll be the last one, friends, if that's okay with you all.
अरे बोल दो यार जोर से सर हेलो या 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 यू गॉट इट यस सर as we are seeing the rising tensions uh, between india and china and uh, currently uh, uh, china is uh, creating china pakistan economic corridor uh, it uh, from baluchistan uh, it is uh, also reaching from uh, east ladakh yeah. uh, around uh, 3000 km uh, road roadways and uh, i think uh, it will create a military alliance uh, of china china and pakistan and uh, will it be a tension for india and uh, earlier uh, earlier also china has claimed uh, uh, in arunachal pradesh of india and some tribal mountainous regions uh, as its states so as an ifs officer uh, how you will see this and uh, how uh, how we will tackle with this situation in future perhaps the most important question but it was a question which one of your colleagues also mentioned earlier look we should have no doubt in our mind that if there is a global power shift towards asia there has to be some kind of via media in the india china equation today at 12 trillion dollar gdp to our 2 and a half they tend to think that they can patronize us will things remain the way they are in the future i hope not with the growth in the indian economy perhaps the chinese should also need to look at india being a collaborating partner no matter competition rather than being one to be patronized on or let me say frankly threatened you are absolutely right i mentioned you pakistan pakistan there is an inherent kida to which there is very little one can do unless generationally people change and say look we are interested in our benefits not in maintaining the society in the way it is what is his enmity in today's world i think the prime minister told president putin that this is not the era of wars if that is how you look at it things will change but otherwise you are absolutely right the chinese the pakistanis is an axis but it's not an axis of today we need to recognize this fact we do recognize it but i hope the chinese also recognize that these are not axes which are necessarily in their longer term interest and i hope the pakistanis to recognize it because collaboration is perhaps the best way forward uh, you know pakistan is going through reeling through these floods bahut log baatein kar rahe hain duniya perhaps de rahi hai aid nahi de rahi mujhe nahi pata lekin 2010 mein bahut zabardast barishein hui thi ye pakistan occupied kashmir pok area mein the only way of accessing them was from india and we did provide all the assistance so mansikta ki baat hoti hai at the end of the day as i said foreign policy is all domestic strategic policies are also like that but if younger people who are more exposed to the world more globalized and more realizing that if we are in it together we will all be for the better if this realization dawns and i am talking about pakistan in particular with china it's a nation state understanding that if you want to be this huge growth dominant thing then with india you need to build respect you need to build partnerships and collaborations there is a degree of contestation it will always happen i leave with you finally the wonderful example of europe for 3 to 400 years the big countries of europe fought with each other the brits with the french the germans with the french the french with the russians and so on and so forth and yet they've come together and formed which is perhaps the greatest peace project in the world the european union allowing free access across pooling resources seeing what you can do why because realizing ki ye to reality hai agar hum aapas mein ladte rahe to hame to koi puchega nahi if this realization dawns in asia and particularly as said china and you can certainly say it won't happen i agree we need to prepare for it won't happen if it happens well and good but prepare you must as you very rightly put for the fact that contestation competition would remain if not at levels which are truly dangerous and violent but certainly in every other way but that's the nature of the hegemony of power and these are the games that nation states play 
Thank you. Thank you, guys. for enlightening us with your rich experience. So as a token of gratitude uh, for this uh, in the enthralling session, uh, I request uh, our honorable director, sir, to present uh, Memento on behalf of the Institute communities. And just two minutes, I would request our recharge for vote up. Thanks. Thank you. Namaskar. Honorable Ambassador Manjit Singh Puriji. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation, being here with us, sparing your valuable time. Thank you for planting a sapling uh, in our campus as part of our green initiative. You're most welcome here, sir. Sir, you have made us realize reality to realization. It was a wonderful journey. India in its diplomacy, democracy, demography, and economy. It was a wonderful lecture, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much here. Honorable Director, sir, uh, my sincere thanks to you for permitting us this uh, wonderful session. It was very enriching and informative. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind presence. My special thank goes to uh, Professor Sahu uh, for organizing, coordinating uh, such a wonderful program. Thank you very much, sir. My special thanks to our international cell outreach activities. Um, in absence of uh, Professor Avinas, uh, my sincere thanks to him and uh, Professor Sanjay and the team here. Sorry. Uh, Thank you all the faculty members, deans, heads of department centers, all the staff members, and their students, including the international student here. Thank you very much. We look forward to such uh, more sessions, sir. We look forward for such wonderful session in future too. Thank you. Kindly join for a cup of tea. Jai Hind.